Okay, here we are with Lauren's ankle. This one is a grade two anterior talofibular ligament sprain. Classic it's textbook ankle sprain where she has been playing netball, landed on someone's foot and went smack and rolled outwards. Let it go out for me. Bang, out that way, all right? So she has gone and done a grade two tear of the ligament. You can see the swelling still there, right? So she's a few weeks down the track. We've been loosening this. This was really swollen. It's now less swollen. There's still, if you look at it, there's still what we call pitting edema in here. It's mostly gone because I've just treated it, so it's actually a bit looser, but there's still a bit of excess fluid in here that was a bit gunged up around this perineal tendon here. That's flushed out quite a bit, but you can still see there's some excessive fluid in there because it's healing. It's getting better, though. What the biggest thing is she's got going on is a loss of range. So apart from the ligament tear and it being a bit unstable, she's lost her range, which means she's not running yet. We've got to try and get this range better. So if you look at her right foot, so you bring your right foot forward. When she pushes her knee forward and goes in dorsiflexion, she can get all the way forward like that, keeps her heel down. She's got about plus 10 centimeters here, okay? So she can go what we call a knee to wall tear. She's got about 10 centimeters of range forward on her left knee, which is normal. Now, the, sorry, the right knee. The left one, if you look at this, when she goes forward, she just doesn't have as much, okay? She just can't get that knee as far forward as she can. We need to get her to around about eight, at least centimeters, maybe 10 centimeters before she even thinks about jogging, plus some healing time frame and some strengthening. So one of our things is trying to get her dorsiflexion better. That's important. Get the range movement and then get the stability on the ankle. So we're gonna do some exercises for that. So the way we do some of that range of movement work for her is to actually help her with her dorsiflexion. So if you face me for me, Laura. So bring that left foot forward. What I get her doing is I'm going to block her talus, if you like, and keep her foot down the ground, which stops her raising her heel. So she's going to do the dorsiflexion work by pushing her knee forward. I'm going to block her like this. Now there's two ways of doing this. One, we just hold it down and then we actually assist her. So for this one, what I'm going to do is hold her down and back and she's going to push her knee forward and try and get the range by stretching the tissues into dorsiflexion without her heel coming up. Okay, so she'll get more range going this way if I hold her down. I'll show you how she does that herself. Then what we also work on is assisting her. So we help with the glide part of it. So with her dorsiflexion, the tib and fib actually glide over the talus. So what we do is assist that movement. So I'm going to pad her up a bit. And I'm going to put this seat belt around to pull her forward. Now this just gives her a little bit extra range while she's in the clinic. So when she goes home, she's got a bit more flexibility. Then she can try and maintain that with some homework, which I'll show you what we do with that. So if I put this around here, this is going to help her help with that glide movement. Now you won't see too much going on here, but what I'm going to do is pull her tip and fib forward. I'm going to block her the talus. So you do that again for me. And I basically pull her forward like that, which gives her extra range with less pain. Okay, come back again. So we do reps and reps and reps of that, where I'm basically pulling her forward, but keeping her heel down. Because if her heel comes up, she's not going to do much dorsiflexion. And that enables her to get more knees over toes, and that'll help her with the range of the ankle, which she needs. Because if she doesn't get her plus 10 back in here, She's going to be stiff when she tries to run, and that's going to swell her ankle up. So that's one of the major things we're doing. How do you do that for homework? Easy. So she's going to get a bench like this. So either at home or in the gym, she's going to work on using this as her height. Come up here for me, Lauren. She's going to get one of these, wrap it around here. Now, Usually these bite in a little bit, so the best thing to do for her, grab your old trusty towel out, put your hand on it from there. Instead of it being straight on there, which is like my hand, right? We're gonna put a towel around it, and that just pads her out a little bit. So she'll find that way more comfortable if I put that there. Now what that's doing, if I bring this out a bit, give her a bit of traction. That's like me, okay? As good as she's gonna get from 
at home from what I do in the clinic. Okay, so that band is holding it back. It's also trying to get a little bit of down pressure to keep a heel down so it stops lifting up. Then she can gently move forward into dorsiflexion and get that range she needs. Because if she just does it without this by herself, her heel comes up all the time. She doesn't really get the dorsiflexion. This also helps a little bit with the glide movement to stop the jamming in the front. Okay, so if you're a bit stiff in your ankle, you tend to jam in the front, this will take that away, some of that. So it enables her to get more dorsiflexion every day and get a faster, quicker recovery. So this is a really nice one for her. But range of movement, jump out of that, is not the only problem. She's got a stability issue. Because with a ligament tear, you start losing the ability to balance and stabilize. And for her, she wants to get back and do a marathon. She has to stabilize that ankle. Now, she's not doing too badly. If I, I've got her to the point where she can stand on one of these. So let's just, let's do your right one first. So if we get her doing her right one, what I want you to notice is when she stands there, just bend your knee a little bit, you'll see this BOSU wobbling a little bit, okay? And that's normal. It's supposed to wobble, but she's got pretty good control. She doesn't really have to hold onto the pole. She can keep that basically stabilized quite nicely, all right? If we look at her left, her left one, put your left one up, what happens is, if you notice, the movements are way more what we call gross movements. They're not fine-tuned like the right one. So she's lost a little bit, and that you think, well, what is that? Is that because she's got less stability here? A lot of the stability is up in here, okay? So her brain, if you like, is not as good as controlling her foot as it used to be. So she's got to retrain that a bit, okay? She's got to get confidence back in her brain just as much as strength in the ligament of her ankle, but she's not too bad. So what we're going to try and do for her is challenge her a bit. She can balance on that, let's challenge it. Go back in there, do your north, east, west, south one. This is what we call a compass. So she's going to try and shift her center of gravity. So she has to balance and change her center of gravity at the same time, which makes her work harder here, but gets her motor patterning up a little bit more. She can balance a little bit better if she starts working on changing her direction, gets her confidence up. And one of the biggest things that Lauren said to me is like, I don't feel as confident on that ankle, okay? This is what's gonna help with that. Plus, it's the weight-bearing stuff, all this little fine motor work, strengthens the ligament up, strengthens the tendons up. That's really good, okay? So that's our balance work. We gotta try and work on stability training just as much as our range movement to try and get her back to the point where she's got enough range, enough stability, enough strength to start the running again and then start retraining for the marathon. See you next time.